<laughs> well, hello everyone. This is Alfadi, and you, you, if you're tuning in, this is uh, another live stream of Let Us Reason with me here, our dear brother Sam Shimon. Sam, welcome, brother, and thank you for accepting our invite uh, in a short notice. Hey, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an honor for me to be used of the Lord to serve you and to serve our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, as well as to serve Muslims with the hopes that they will come to see who Jesus is and escape Muhammad and fall in love with the true eternal son of God for their salvation. And we ask the Lord Jesus to bless this session, anoint us to speak truth without error by a spirit for his glory in Jesus name. So thank you. you. Amen. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, uh, those of you who have been here early and thank you for those who will join us and thank you for the moderators. And by the way, I want everyone to please share this as as, you know, to as many pages as you can and as many places as you can, because this is going to be a hot topic. Uh, the topic, of course, for today has to do with Ishmael. And I intentionally mentioned the word Islam and also, of course, uh, the idea that uh, the Arabs are descendants of Ishmael. This is something, of course, I grew up as a yes. Muslim, Sam, yes. believing wholeheartedly that Ishmael made it to Mecca that he and his father Abraham were the founders of the city well, that we call Mecca, that the founders of, or the, the ones who established uh, the rituals for Islam, that he was the one who was gonna be sacrificed. And at the same time, uh, the prophet of Islam descended from this lineage and so on and so forth. But you know, as a believer today, I look back at these things and I'm like, I can't find a single evidence to support any of this, biblically or archeologically or any other way. So brother, that's why I invited you because I know you wrote a number of articles on this topic. So why don't you start by talking about, uh, you know, what you have addressed in the past? Yes. And again, guys, I do appreciate your prayers that the Lord Jesus will give me the health I need to glorify him until it's my time to go and the holiness to delight the heart of Jesus Christ. Cause I'm not young as I'm getting older. My voice <clears throat> isn't what it used to be, but we trust the spirit to enable me to use my voice to glorify Christ. Now, when it comes to <clears throat> the archaeological evidence that refutes Islam, no one more qualified than Dan Gibson and Jay Smith and yourself. I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for the series that Jay and you have been doing, building on and <clears throat> culling from the research of Dan Gibson. I praise Jesus Christ for Dan Gibson. Archaeology is Islam's worst nightmare. As we can see, and as your series have demonstrated <clears throat> there is no proof that Islam's origins begin in Mecca and Medina, right? It's all in Petra. Thank God for the massive amount of archaeological data that's pretty much showing that the Islamic version of history does not exist in reality. It's only <clears throat> the byproduct of Muslim Muslims imagination trying to situate Muhammad in a particular location and connect him to Ishmael. What I want to do, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, is to show you that Quranically, even the Quran does not bear out the claims of Muslims, specifically that Ishmael is the ancestor of Muhammad. Now, brother, if you hear background noise, let me know. I'll put on my earplugs. Is the you hear anything in the back or are you okay? I mean, uh, every now and then I hear something. Yeah, it's the car. So let me see. Sorry, guys, because you know I'm over here by my beautiful balcony, by the grace of the Lord and his provision, and yeah. thank the people of God for providing for us. For the glory of Christ, yeah. Let me do this, brother. So Sorry, you can have a, they're provided for you, so you can have a balcony, man. That's amazing. Isn't bro. That amazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know, uh, all right. can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Praise okay. God. Okay. What I want to focus on is the Quran itself, because for Muslims, the Quran is their primary source document, meaning <clears throat> it is the divinely dictated speech of Allah. And so, if I can demonstrate that even what they believe about Muhammad and his connection to Ishmael is not supported by the Quran, the gig is up. Islam is a farce. Muhammad is a false prophet, and he is an antichrist, <clears throat> and he has nothing to do with Abraham. So what's the argument? Muslims will claim that M Muhammad is an heir of Abraham, not only spiritually but physically. Why physically? Because he's a physical descendant of Abraham, not through Sarah, but through Hagar, Hajar, who gave birth to Ishmael. And Ishmael supposedly is the physical progenitor ancestor of Muhammad, because according to Islamic tradition, and this is a tradition that you know very well, tradition not found in the Quran, tradition found in the Ahadith that comes about over 100 years after the reported death of Muhammad. According to these sources, Ishmael and Hagar 
when they left, when they were sent away from Sarah and Isaac, supposedly landed in Mecca. And once there, Ishmael married a woman from the tribe of Jurhum. I know you know this. i preaching to the choir, right? Jurhum. And so Abraham visited Ishmael, didn't like his first wife, and pretty much told her to communicate a message. And this is in Sahil Bukhari, by the way. I'm not making this up. Guys, I'm not making this up. This is found in Sahil Bukhari, a rare, real lengthy narration. How Hagar and Ishmael ended up in Mecca, and then Hagar supposedly ran between the two hills of Safa and Marwa, trying to connect that with the rites of pilgrimage. You know, Even though we know that was a pagan rite, where there were two idols on these two hills, and the pagans would run between the two hills and honor these idols to do homage to these idols. Muslims spiritualized that and said, no, that was the time when Hagar was looking for water. So she ran up to one hill, couldn't find water, ran up to the other hill, couldn't find And she did it for seven times. You'd think the first two times or three times she'd get it. There's no water, right? But somehow, magically, she did it seven times. Now, besides that, the traditions say that Ishmael married a woman from the tribe of Jurhum. Abraham didn't like her, so Ishmael divorced her and married another woman from the same tribe, Jurhum. And then when Abraham again appeared, liked what he saw, and pretty much confirmed to Ishmael, keep this one, stick with this one. And supposedly from that woman, he fathered the physical ancestors of Muhammad. So Muhammad comes from Ishmael because Ishmael went to Mecca, married this woman from Jurhum, had children who became the ancestors of Muhammad. Suffice it to say, there's not a shred of archaeological, historical, textual proof that Ishmael ever went to Mecca, let alone marry a woman from Jurhum. As far as the Bible is concerned, if you go to Genesis 21, verse 21, and I pray that the connection stays strong. Amen. Genesis 21, 21, it says, Hagar, an Egyptian, and the Muslims would admit, Hagar is an Egyptian. She's an Egyptian, that she was gifted to Abraham and Sarah by the Pharaoh. Because if you read Genesis chapter 12, Abraham and Sarai, at that time he was called Abram, and his wife was called Sarai, went to Egypt because there was famine in the land of Canaan. Pharaoh saw that Sarai was beautiful, and unbeknownst to him, he didn't know that Sarai was Abram's wife, because Abram hid that from him, took her and tried to defile her, but then God brought plagues upon him in his household. And then Pharaoh thought that this woman is a mad woman, an evil woman, sent her on her way with, with, with spoils and sent Abraham on his way. And according to Islamic tradition, that's when Pharaoh gifted Abraham with Hagar, this Egyptian servant. He gave right. Hagar as a servant, maid servant to Sarai. Even the Hadith say she was a servant of Sarai, Sarah. Okay, now she's Egyptian. Genesis 21, 21 tells us that they settled in the wilderness of Paran, which is not Arabia. The wilderness of Paran is around Egypt and Canaan in that vicinity. But beyond right. that, Genesis 21, 21 clearly states Hagar went and got him an Egyptian wife. That's Genesis 21, 21. So brother, help me understand. If Ishmael's mother is Egyptian and his father is Hebrew, Abraham was a Hebrew a descendant of Shem through Eber who crossed over. Because Hebrew can mean a descendant of Eber and one who crossed over. Okay. So he's not Arab. Hagar's not Arab. Ishmael didn't marry an Arab. How then does he end up becoming the physical ancestor of the Quraysh? It's a miracle, brother. It's a miracle. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Did, didn't you know that the genes can change? <laughs> All right. Now, so I want people to understand the implication. If you take the Islamic version of history, Ishmael is not the ancestor of Muhammad. Now, it is possible. I want people to hear this, understand what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. It is possible that some later descendants of Ishmaelites ended up settling in Mecca. And sure, sure. It's a That's possibility. Possible. We're not denying it. But Muslims won't accept that version of history, brother. You know that because the Hadith doesn't say that. The Hadith do not say that at some future time, long after Ishmael, some of his descendants settled in Mecca and became the progenitors of Muhammad. They insist Ishmael settled, settled there. So even that version of history, where you have later generations of Ishmaelites <clears throat> settling in Mecca, is not acceptable to Islam. Islam ins insists 
that Ishmael himself went to Mecca and there's not a shred of proof. And we challenge the Muslims. Muslims, you're here. Give us some pre-Islamic textual, historical, archaeological proof. Ishmael personally settled in Mecca and married an Arabian woman, a woman from the tribe of Junhum. Please give us your best evidence. Try as you might, you won't, you'll fail. And that's the first line of argument. But a brother, do you want to add something? No, or? I just want to add, you know, it's it's amazing, brother, that these are the kind of dilemmas we need to highlight. And I'm thankful that you brought it up because they're stuck, really. If you want to accept the tradition, then there is a problem, archaeologically yes. speaking. If you want to accept the other possible alternative, right? I mean, it's okay to say, well, one of his descendants settled in Mecca and he became the progenitor of Muhammad. I'll accept that. It's okay. No problem. Now that means they're going to have to deny the tradition, which means there's a problem with the tradition. You see how, how that works? Exactly. So you caught the dilemma, and by the grace of God, I hope the Muslims catch the dilemma. Either way, damn if you do, damn if you, you, you lose either way, which is why the Muslims in the comment section want to change the topic to the Trinity, the deity of Christ and the Bible. They don't want to deal with the topic because they know this topic is too much and exposes Muhammad as a fraud and the Quran as a false book inspired by Satan or some evil spirit. Now, the second problem, the second problem, we're going to go through it systematically. Second problem. <clears throat> Muslims, I hope you're listening because I'm looking at the YouTube channel, the comments. I'm not on Facebook. And I just paste, posted links to three articles in the YouTube comment section. I posted links to three articles on this topic about Ishmael and his relationship to Muhammad. Here's my challenge to the Muslims, and I hope someone takes me up on the challenge, like ultimate lie, ultimate falsehood, ultimate Satanist who's here, who stalks us every time we do a show. I want you to quote a single verse in the Quran. Here's my challenge. The Quran com claims to be complete, comprehensive, and it provides a detailed exposition of everything. In fact, brother, if you don't mind, if you go, can you open up your Quran for me and go to chapter 12, verse 111? Sure. 12 verse uh, 111. Yes, read for me. See what the Quran claims for itself. Very good. Why don't you, you know, continue with the, your thoughts yes. until I, I get there. Yeah. As he gets there, because I want you to know the Quran claims that it is a scripture that provides detailed explanation of everything. Full exposition, not partial, complete, <clears throat> detailed exposition of everything that it mentions. And it provides detailed explanation of its passages. Now, I want you to then see for yourself that's what the Quran claims. So if you're in chat, excuse me, chapter 12, verse 111, Holy Spirit, loosen our tongues to speak for the glory of Christ. What does it say, brother? I am getting there. I'm almost there. 12, verses 111. Yes. All right. We'll get there right now for you. So Guys, pay attention there. now. Pay attention. All right. So chapter 12. Uh, verse 111, uh, I'll read Bechtel for instance. I have a couple of translations. It says, in their history, verily, there is a lesson for men of understanding. It is not invented story, but a confirmation of the existing, meaning the scripture, and a detailed explanation of everything and a wait. guidance and a mercy for wait, folk. Wait, emphasize that part. Okay. Go too fast. Let the Muslims catch it because, brother, you're going to give them a chance not to listen. A detailed yeah. explanation of some things? A detailed explanation of everything. So it fully explains everything. Now, if I want it to be hyper-literal, that means the Quran explains everything in creation. It explains calculus and algebra and, and geometry and quarks because it says everything, right? That's right. And yet we know that's a lie from the pit of hell. But let's be generous. Let's be charitable. A detailed explanation of everything it mentions. That too is a lie from the pit of hell because the Quran fails to provide adequate information about many of the stories and characters mentioned therein. So that's a lie from the pit of hell. But lest Muslims accuse me of taking one passage and making it say something it doesn't. Brother, can you go to chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran? Chapter 41, verse 3. Guys, pay attention. This is the repeated assertion of the Quran. I'm just going to give you a few so that the Muslims here, like Muslim stone kisser, Muslim monotheist, a.k.a. stone kisser, will answer my challenge. In chapter 41, verse 3, what does it say? All right. We're getting there. 41, verse 3. Let's use Yusuf Ali this time. A yes. book thereof, the verses are explained in detail. In a detail, not partially, right? That's right. 
Okay, so yep. here's your, right. how you're going to prove that the Quran is a, is a farce. It's a fraud. Folks, pay attention. This is just two of many passages. The Quran explains everything and provides detailed exposition of its passages. Now, let me show you that this is one of the greatest arguments that the Quran is a lie from the pit of hell. Muhammad is a false prophet. Here's my challenge to the Muslims who are listening because we have Muslim monotheists, a.k.a. Muslim stone kisser. Show me in the Quran where it says Ishmael is the father of Muhammad. Show me in the Quran where it says Abraham is the ancestor of Muhammad. Show me in the Quran where it says Muhammad is a physical son of Abraham or Ishmael. Show me where the Quran explicitly states that. Any challengers, challengers ready to meet my challenge? Bro, Show me where it says it. I asked these questions for two years on Facebook. I have yet to get an answer. Yeah, and right, because you won't. Because here is what should be shocking to the Christians. The Quran nowhere says Muhammad is a son of Abraham, let alone a son of Ishmael. Nowhere you'll find anything explicit that says Abraham and Ishmael are the ancestors of Muhammad. And here's another challenge. They'll quote verses that talk about Abraham and Ishmael building a house of worship for Allah, but it doesn't tell you where that house of worship was built. Exactly. Assume it's the Kaaba and Mecca. So here's my further challenge. And I'm going to yeah. let even our brother chime in on this because you've done series with Jay Smith on this. That's here's right. my further challenge, challenge to the Muslims. Not only show me Abraham and Ishmael are the physical ancestors of Muhammad from your Quran, because the Quran says it explains everything. Show me that the house they built is in Mecca. It's the Kaaba. Please exactly. give proof. Exactly. Show me the Kaaba and Mecca in one verse. Just one yeah, verse. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Right. And they can't tell me that in chapter three, verse ninety-six, Bakka is Mecca, because nowhere the Quran says Bakka is Mecca. That's an assumption on your part that Bakka is Mecca. Where did you get that from? In fact, this one about Bakka is even a stronger evidence that we're talking about something way north. Thank you. You see, you see how history, archaeology, and the Quran destroy Islam and expose Muhammad as a fraud. Like David Wood says, he is the most obviously false prophet in all of human history. You couldn't get a better example of someone who's a false prophet, clearly a false prophet, where all the evidence shows he's a fraud, an agent of the devil, than Muhammad. Now, with that said, let me give you proof that Ishmael cannot be, Ishmael cannot be the father of Muhammad according to the Quran. Now, I have an article on this. I'm going to post it in the comment section of YouTube. And later on, I can give it to you, brother, and you can make it available on Facebook. But in this article, I titled it, The Quran Confirms <clears throat> Ishmael Cannot Be the Ancestor of Muhammad. Now, I'm going to read the verses wait, wait. from the article. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say the Quran confirms this, Sam? Yes. Are you sure about that? Absolutely. The Quran confirms Ishmael cannot be the father of Muhammad cannot be the father of Muhammad. Muslims, are you hearing? We're using yes, your source, your right. book, right? Yep. We're not using Sam's book. We're using Allah's book, right? Yes. To prove uh, to you. Please refute me. Could you please refute me? Please or show me. Or, or refute Allah, one of the two. Yeah. No, and I'm, we're waiting, right? The Muslims are listening. Ultimate uh, stalker is here. And Muslim stone-kissing monotheist is here. And I've yet to hear them provide a single verse from the Quran to refute me. Guys, why are you all of a sudden silent? Please silence the, the kafir here. We're the kafirun, him and I. Silence us for Allah and his messenger. Come on, guys. Where is your proof? But I'm going to make it worse for you guys. Now I want to show you that the Quran positively shows Ishmael cannot be the father of Muhammad. Now why? I'm going to read it from my article. I gave you the link. Here's why. Muhammad was sent to a community that did not have a warner or a prophet sent to them, and they did not have scripture. Guys, remember the argument. Muhammad was sent to a community, and I'm going to read the verses, that did not have a scripture given to them before the coming Muhammad and did not have a prophet or warner sent to them. Let me read chapter 28, verse 46. <clears throat> chapter 28, verse 46. Nor was thou at the side of the mountain of Tor when we called to Moses. Yet art thou sent as a mercy from thy Lord to give warning to a people, a people to whom no warner had come before thee. No warner came before you to them. Now, this assumes this is Muhammad. In order that they may receive admonition. Now, chapter 32, verse 3 of the Quran. 
chapter 32, verse 3. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that thou mayest admonish a people to whom no warner has come before thee in order that they may be they may receive guidance. Again, I'll read two more for the sake of time. Chapter 35, verse 42. Chapter 35, verse 42. They swore their strongest oaths by Allah that if a warner came to them, they would follow his guidance better, better than any of the other peoples. But when a warner came to them, meaning Muhammad, it has only increased their flight from righteousness. Not right? And then finally, chapter 34, verse 34. But we had not given them books which they could study, nor sent them messengers to them before thee as warners. So it's clear, folks. And I got more verses, but for the sake of time. The people Muhammad went to had never received a book from Allah, a book of guidance. Never had a warner come to them or a messenger. Muhammad was the first. But folks, you got a problem. Here's the problem. According to the Quran, Ishmael was a prophet who was given a scripture that he passed on to his descendants, and he taught his descendants religion. Here, let me read it. Chapter 19, verses 54 to 55. Chapter 19, verses 54 and 55, as well as 58. Read the context. It mentions a slew of prophets and messengers, one of whom is Ishmael. Now pay attention. And relate the story of Ishmael as mentioned in the book. He was indeed true to his promises, and he was a messenger, a prophet. So he's both a messenger and a prophet. The Rasul and Nabi. He used to enjoin prayer and almsgiving on his people. So he taught them how to pray and give zakat. And he was pleasing to his Lord. And then it goes on to say, These are the people, all these prophets, including Ishmael, upon whom Allah bestowed his blessings from among the prophets of the posterity of Adam and of the posterity of those whom we carried in the ark with Noah and of the posterity, posterity of Abraham and Israel. And they are of those whom we guided and chose when the signs of the gracious God were cited upon them, unto them, they fell down, prostrating themselves before Allah and weeping. So guys, don't forget, Ishmael is a prophet, a messenger. He taught his people religion, gave them guidance, taught them how to pray, and also taught them about alms, zakat. Final one, final one, this one's very important. Chapter 6, verses 84 to 89. Chapter 6, verses 84 to 89. I know it's kind of lengthy, but guys, you got to hear these arguments because these are ironclad arguments that shows Islam is bankrupt, bankrupt historically, archaeologically, morally, spiritually, because it's a lie from the pit of hell. May the Lord Jesus save the Muslims out of this wicked, deceiving false prophet and his false religion. Chapter 6, verses 84 to 89. We gave him Isaac and Jacob, all three guided, and before him we guided Noah, and among his progeny, his descendants, David, Solomon, Job, Joseph, Moses, and Aaron. Thus do we reward those who do good. And Zachariah and John, and Jesus and Elias, all in the ranks of the righteous. And Ismail, Ismail, Ishmael, Elisha, Jonas, and Lot. And to all we gave favor above all nations, to them and to their fathers and progeny and brethren. We chose them and we guided them to a straight path. This is the guidance of Allah. He giveth that guidance to whom he pleaseth of his worshipers. If they were to join other gods with him, all that they did would be vain for them. Here's the key. These were the men, the ones mentioned, even Ishmael, to whom we gave the book, Kitab, and authority and prophethood. Muslims, you have a problem. I don't know if the Christians caught it. Ishmael is a prophet and messenger whom Allah bestowed and favored, gave him a book. That book, obviously, he gave to his offspring. And it says he taught his offspring how to pray and give zakat. But we just read in the Quran, pay attention, folks. We just read in the Quran, the community Muhammad went to never had a prophet, never had a warner, were never given a book, and they never received guidance. But, folks, here's the problem. If those people were the descendants of Ishmael, then that would be a lie because they would have had guidance from Ishmael who was a warner and a prophet, and he would have given them a book. So then how can the people that Muhammad to be the sons of Ishmael if they were never given a book before Muhammad's Quran and never had a prophet sent to them or a warner before Muhammad because their ancestor Ishmael would have been their prophet, their warner, 
their messenger, and he would have given them book and guidance. Exactly. The Quran destroys Islam. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's one of the most obvious arguments is like, how can you tell me you are a descendant of someone that the Quran already told you? He gave people warnings, but yet yours says his people never received warnings. So we have a problem, right? And even Houston, Houston can solve that problem yeah. for you, bro. You read it out of my mind. Houston, we have a problem. You yeah. guys hey, by the way, I just want to thank everybody who is complimenting me on my crib and my house. I guess you're saying my camera is in good shape because this is a false background. But thank you, everybody. Appreciate yeah. it. So you see that, folks? You see how the Quran destroys Islam and destroys Muhammad? The very book, which is supposed to be proof of Muhammad, is the greatest proof of his fraud and that Ishmael is not his ancestor. So now we've established from the Quran, the Quran is an Islamic nightmare. Nowhere does it say Ishmael is the father of Muhammad or that Abraham is his ancestor. Nowhere. Prove us wrong. Nowhere does it say Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba in Mecca. Prove us wrong. It's your Quran, guys. We're the kafirun. We're the unbelievers. Silence us. Give us your proof. You can't because the Quran is your enemy. Glory to Jesus Christ, the eternal son. Not only that, but positively, the Quran states Ishmael can't be Muhammad's ancestor because Ishmael was a prophet and a warner who gave his descendants a book and guidance and taught them religion. But the people Muhammad went to had no warner before him, did not know what the guidance was, was never given a book, showing they cannot be the Ishmaelites, the sons of Ishmael. Now, what about later Islamic tradition? Because in later Islamic tradition, you do find Muslims trying to create a genealogy to connect Muhammad with Ishmael. But that too is problematic. Do you know why? In one of my articles, Ishmael is not the father of Muhammad, part two. I quote Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Kathir and their genealogy. Let me show you what Ibn Kathir says about For, the genealogy of Muhammad. Go ahead. Let's stop right here, brother, because I want people to know where to go and find your articles, how they can follow you, how they can support you, brother. So take a, t take a moment to explain yes. that to them. Yes, if you go to answeringislam.net and you find individual authors, you look for Sam Shimon. You're going to find two links to Sam Shimon's articles, my, my articles, because we changed the format of the website. We're using a new software. So when you go there, you click, you'll, you'll get the latest <clears throat> articles that I've written using the new software. You need to then scroll down to the bottom of the page. It gives you a link to the older format, the older software we use, and there you're going to find most of my articles in the older version, the older format. And there I have two articles. Ishmael is not the father of Muhammad, parts one and two. And I also have an article about the child of sacrifice. According to the Quran and Islamic tradition, was it Isaac or Ishmael? And Lord willing, we'll talk about that in a moment. So all of this is there free of charge. I want you to print them out, upload them to your websites. You have our permission. Spread them to other people. Teach the material until we see every Muslim knee bow and every Muslim tongue confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God, their only hope of salvation, their Lord, and Muhammad is a false prophet. Muslims need to escape this wicked false prophet of the devil and find salvation in Jesus Christ only because only he can save them. So go there and even on my blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. You'll find a lot of my articles because now – Every time I write a new article, I put it on the blog. I'm not contributing much to answeringislam.net because I have a blog, and I try to update that at least two or three times a week if I can. So go there, study the material, absorb it, use it to glorify Jesus Christ because Islam is so easy to expose and refute, and Muhammad is such an obviously false prophet that the real miracle, the real miracle of Islam is that anyone would even think this man is a prophet. That's the miracle that you would think such an immoral imposter could be a prophet of the true God. May the Lord Jesus erase his name from under the sun, from the earth, and save Muslims from this wickedly false immoral imposter and bring them to salvation in him and him alone who loves them more than they can imagine in Jesus' name. Very good. Uh, folks, uh, thank you again for following us. Thank you for the moderators. And uh, please, uh, Sam, uh, you're going to have a live stream, right? Yes. Uh, coming soon, like right yeah. after this one? 
before this, I did a live stream. I'm going to do one right after this. God willing, I'm going to shoot for maybe around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So look for me around 8.30, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel, Shamunian, S-H-A-M-O-U-N-I-A-N. Now, just to let you know about my live streams, over 90% of my live streams are focused on core Christian doctrines and biblical exegesis. Amen. I may talk about Islam here and there, but my primary focus is to be used of the Spirit, to interpret the Scriptures, unpack the meat of Scriptures, so that we as Christians know what the core doctrines of the Christian faith are, why we should believe them, and how to live out the faith for the glory of Jesus Christ. So join me right after this. I'll be going live around, what did I say? Okay, but it's, yeah, between 8.30 and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So between two to three hours from now. So moderators, yeah. please kindly, if you remember, just uh, advertise, uh, you know, Sam's channel. And I want to also address those who are here to ask a lot of questions that have nothing to do with the topic. Guess what? I won't even pay attention to them. So either stick to the topic, please, or you'll be wasting your time. Go ahead, brother. Now, what about the genealogies provided by Muslims in subsequent centuries? Like here in my article, Ishmael's not the father Muhammad, part two. I'm quoting from the English translation of Al Sira Al Nabawiya, Volume One, The Life of the Prophet Muhammad by Ibn Kathir. Now, Ibn Kathir is writing this about 700 years after the reported death of Muhammad. So, man, he's he's not even a contemporary. He's not even writing within 100 years. Over 700 years later, and you know better than I do, he was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Al Islam, Ibn Kathir. Right? That's right. Exactly. Exactly. But it's 700 years later, right, brother? He's not. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 700 years. So exactly. here, here is a guy writing about 700 years later. Now, there are some earlier genealogies, but they, too, say the same thing. Now, folks, notice what they say about Muhammad's genealogy. I'm about to read the genealogy. They're going to admit to you that we can trace Muhammad's genealogy to a man named Adnan. But beyond Adnan, it's pure guesswork conjecture. And anyone who tries to go beyond Adnan, and tell us the names in that chain to Ishmael, they are guessing if not lying. That's what it says. So no, guys, notice the irony. You have Muslims who will mock the genealogies of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 1 and Luke 3. Supposedly they're full of contradictions, they're inconsistent. But they do not tell you, here's what I want you to remember. They don't tell you that number one, the Quran fails to provide, see again, did you see it? It's like I'm a prophet, Muslim monotheist, Muslim stone-kissing monotheist. Look what he said. What about Matthew and Luke's genealogy? Man, you just confirmed I'm more of a prophet than your prophet. Guys, did you see what I just said? Did you catch his response? Muslim stone-kissing monotheist. He thinks he's a monotheist, but he smooches it's the black right here For everybody to see it right now. Did I not just say they're going to poke, poke holes at the genealogies of Jesus in Matthew 1 and Luke 3? And what did this pagan do who thinks he worships the true God? May God... Grant him repentance, escape Muhammad, and follow up with Jesus. He did what I just said. Attack the genealogies of Matthew and Luke. Wow. Thank you for proving I'm more of a prophet than your prophet. Thank you for helping me to expose your prophet for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, this is what we call a two koki fallacy. Because number one, number one, here's my challenge to Muslim stone-kissing monotheists. Show me the genealogy of Muhammad in the Quran. Give me his genealogy. Come on now. You earlier said that the Quran is complete. Guys, scroll back. This stone-kissing pagan who thinks he's a monotheist said the Quran is complete. I now call your bluff. Show me the genealogy of Muhammad in your Quran. Show me, at least in our Gospels, which the Quran confirms is the gospel that God gave Christians to judge by. We have Jesus' history and genealogy, so we don't need secondary sources written hundreds of years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can't even do anything closely to what we have in the Gospels. Prove me wrong. Show me the genealogy of your prophet in the Quran. You can't, because your Quran is a book of, a book of yeah, yeah. misguidance. You can't. You're embarrassed by your prophet and your book because your book and your prophet embarrass you in front of unbelievers, showing us why we should never take Muhammad seriously. Glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yeah, and, and you see, guys, what, what Sam just did, this is the method that I love to do. Don't come wasting my time. 
If you want to play that game, I'll turn the table around and you go and you just, you know, uh, waste your time, basically. So you're asking us about the genealogy. Oh, wow, you're amazing. You know, you know about our genealogy. Why don't you go and find your genealogy then? So that's number one. Number two, it doesn't get better when we do go to extra chronic sources because they're about 100 to 200 to 300 400 years after the reported death of muhammad and here's what they say folks can you trace muhammad's genealogy beyond adnan to ishmael i'm going to just read from the horse's mouth here now here again this is ibn kathir i'm going to read the select portions because it's too long this is why malik god bless him anhu did not enthuse over the attempt at tracing genealogy back to before Adnan. So Malik wasn't enthusiastic or optimistic of trying to go beyond Adnan. They said you can get to Adnan with certainty, but beyond that point is guesswork. Let me read another paragraph, okay? Let me read another paragraph. As for Malik, God have mercy on him, he expressed disapproval when asked about someone tracing his descent back to Adnan, uh, to Adam, I'm sorry, to Adam, and commented, once comes to him knowledge of that, how can you trace his genealogy in Adam? Where do you get that information from? When he was asked about tracing back to Ishmael, he expressed similar disapproval. Okay, let me repeat it again. When Alec was asked to trace Muhammad's genealogy to Ishmael, he expressed similar disapproval, asking who could provide such information? Wow. Malik also disliked tracing the genealogy of the prophets, such as saying Abraham, son of so and so, and Al Muyatti stated this in his book. Another one, Al Suhaili commented also that Malik's viewpoint was analogous to what was related by Urwa bin Al Zubair. Urwa bin Al Zubair. Now, my memory may be <coughs> fade, fading now, but isn't it isn't Urwa the nephew of Aisha? Again, I'm going by memory. I may be wrong. If I recall, Urwa bin al Zubair, I think it may have been, again, don't quote me on this. Do you recall, brother, or are we both, our memory are getting old? I, I, I believe he is, okay. uh, but also I don't want to say See, don't definitively. I'm not saying authoritatively. Yeah, but Urwa bin Zubair was uh, at the time of Muhammad anyway. Okay, so even if he's not, guys were saying we're old, our memory is not what it used to be, especially when it comes to Islam. Whether Speak for yourself, not, bro. Yeah, no, Speak I, for yourself. Okay. I, well, my memory is like that of an elephant. Give me a peanut and I remember. But whether he was or not, you just said he was at the time of Muhammad. Urwa bin al Zubair. Notice what he said, who is reported to have said, We have found no one, no one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. Bam, game over. Let me repeat it again. We have found no one who knows the line between who? Adnan and Ishmael. That means you Muslims, you are liars. You are only guessing, if not lying, and deceiving us. Deceiving us when you say that you can definitely trace Muhammad's genealogy to Ishmael because those closest to Muhammad, here it is, I post in the comment section, Urwa bin al Zubair, who is reported to have said, We have found no one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. Your religion is over. Your prophet is over. He's under the feet of Jesus. But let me read just a few more quotations so we can really seal the deal. A few more quotations from, again, again, from Ibn Kathir. Now, this one you're going to like. Why are you going to like this one? It is reported that Ibn Abbas said, between Adnan and Ishmael, there were 30 ancestors who are unknown. Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's first cousin, considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars, says, between Adnan and Ishmael, we don't know. Now, one more from him. One more from him. Ibn Abbas is also reported to have said, when he traced back lines of descent as far as Adnan, the genealogists have lied twice or thrice. They have lied. And that skepticism is even more characteristic of Ibn Masud. Ibn Masud too whose attitude is like that of Ibn Abbas. Folks, I don't know if you understand this. Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Masood are companions of Muhammad. Abdullah ibn Masood was considered the greatest Quranic reciter whom Muhammad said learned the Quran from, him and Ubay ibn Kaab. Ibn Masood and Ibn Abbas said that people have lied 
twice or three times when they try to give you the genealogy beyond Adnan Tushmel, they are liars. And then Omar ibn al Khattab, oh my goodness, Omar ibn al Khattab, ibn -Khattab yeah. Yeah, stated the second caliph, we carry back the genealogy only as far as Adnan. How far back? As Adnan. Game over, Muhammad. There is absolutely no proof, even from your so called genealogies, that Muhammad is a son of Ishmael. And then it gets worse. And I'm going to leave it at this point. We can talk about someone else. Even in the list, they can't agree whether Muhammad is the son of uh, Qadar, the son of Ishmael, or Nabawith. They can't agree. Some say he's the son of Qadar, Qadar, son of Ishmael. Others say Nabat, Nabawith, son of Ishmael. So they can't even agree which of the sons are the ancestors of Muhammad. Is it Qadar, son of Ishmael, or Nabawith, son of Ishmael? They can't even agree. Guys, the religion of Islam has been exposed. The gig is up. The Quran is a lie. Muhammad is a farce. And there is no proof he's a son of Ishmael. Game over, Muslims. Go find you another religion. Stop saying Abraham is the father of your prophet. This is the religion of Abraham. Stop saying the God of Abraham is the God of Muhammad. He's not. All of the Quran is a false God. Come back to Jesus, your only hope of salvation. Amen. And here is what's so interesting. Uh, you know, the Quran actually talks about somewhat somewhat you know uh, the genealogy of jesus at least by associating him to the supposed family of mary chapter three which you know i don't take anything for granted when it comes to the quran but nevertheless you know at least the quran have somewhat a semi uh, you know uh, attempt to have a genealogy for christ now why didn't do the same thing for muhammad god's seal of the prophets God's greatest prophet to mankind. Number two, where do Muslims get their uh, genealogy of Muhammad from, brother? In addition to the traditions you mentioned, isn't it Ibn Hisham, Sirat yeah. Rasulullah? That is found. And how, how far is it uh, after the death of this man? Exactly. 180 years at least. Yeah, that's it. In other words, folks, listen to what we're telling you. Even if we assume it's from Ibn Ishaq, because Ibn Hisham supposedly edited Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ishaq's Sira, the That's life correct. of Muhammad, was around 750 AD. That too is over 100 years after the death of Muhammad. Notice, over 100, over 100 years. But we don't have copies of Ibn Ishaq. We have copies of what Ibn Hisham did in the 9th century, 800s, to Ibn Ishaq. He took Ibn Ishaq and he edited and changed it because he didn't like what he saw. So he edited and removed things he didn't like. And so the copies we have come from Ibn Hisham's version of Ibn Ishaq. And Ibn Hisham's version is in the 9th century, around 830, 830, about 200 years after the death of Muhammad. Game over, Muhammad. Game over. It's over. It's now over. that we have uh, finished, finished a dead man, uh, what else would you like to uh, add to this topic, brother? Or even if you want to venture into the genealogy of Christ, I mean, I'll leave that decision up to you. But... Uh, we need to, uh, you know, at least continue along this line of authenticity, uh, reliability of sources, and so on and so forth. Yes. Well, here's the thing. Speaking of Ishmael and Muhammad, this also now destroys the argument by modern Muslim apologists who are very dishonest, even when it comes to their own tradition. And I'm going to name them. Jamal Badawi. Jamal Badawi, in my estimation, is one of the most wickedly dishonest and inept Muslim apologists. It's unfortunate that he's retired from debating because I would have loved to have debated him and exposed him by the grace of Jesus Christ. He's from Halifax, Nova Scotia. He's pretty much Shabir Ali's mentor when it comes to Islam. You can watch him in some of his debates, which are found on YouTube, and he'll tell you that the Quran clearly points to Ishmael being the child that Allah commanded Abraham to sacrifice in a dream. That's chapter 37 of the Quran. You read 99 all the way to 113. Around there, you'll see. What he does not tell you, and what the Muslim sources actually show, what he does not tell you, and what the Muslim sources actually show, because he won't tell you this, because he's dishonest, because he fo follows the father of lies like his prophet did. <clears throat> Number one, nowhere in the Quran does it say that the child is Ishmael. Nowhere in the Quran. You will not find in the Quran where it says Abraham was commanded to offer up Ishmael. That's number Absolutely. One. In fact, I can not comment there. on that after Please you're do. done with your thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, go so ahead, comment it, on that. 
Yeah, and you wrote an article on this, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so, yeah, so you find this in Surah Al-Safat, which is chapter 37, verse 110, and every single commentary you look at always will bring up the idea that it was Ishaq, and then later it changed to Ishmael. So isn't it amazing that they begin with Ishaq, and then at a later time, the name Ishmael pops in? In okay. fact, Sam, isn't it true that the mention of Ishmael in the Quran is a later revelation, not an early one? Exactly. When you hear about Ishmael, when he's mentioned, there's nothing conclusive that connects him with Abraham. It's only later on where there's a connection between him and Abraham in the later chapters of the Quran. Now, let me repeat what he just said. I don't think people got this. And here's the article. Let me get you the article. You will find that some of the earliest commentary commentaries on the Quran say it was Isaac, not Ishmael. And in that article, I quote them. In fact, one of the greatest Muslim commentators, historians, and scholars. In fact, Yasir Qadi, Yasir Qadi, in one of his lectures, said that when it comes to tafsir, Al Tabari is the greatest. He basically exactly. said that. I'm, I'm giving you the gist of what he said. Al Tabari, he's the greatest commentator, and he's I'm, much. I'm looking earlier. at it right now in Arabic. I'm looking at it in front of me. Yeah. Right, and then much earlier, and I'll have you read the Arabic in a minute. And he's much earlier than Ibn Kathir. Tabari is coming around 900s, 10th century. Ibn Kathir is 700 years later. He's coming around the 14th century Hijra, approximately. So Tabari is much earlier. Even he's late, but he's earlier. He's in the 900s. Ibn Kathir is 700 years after the reported death of Muhammad, like 1300s AD. Tabari, who's much closer, who's m much more comprehensive in that he has a comprehensive commentary on the Quran and a comprehensive history. history. Exactly. Tabari, he says that the correct view, folks, don't take my word for it. I just posted the link again in the comment section of the YouTube. He said the correct view is that it was Ishaq, Isaac, not Ishmael. When you get to Ibn Kathir, by the time of Ibn Kathir, he says, no, it's Ishmael, not Ishaq. But he comes 700 years later, Tabari, who's earlier, who's closer, who has a comprehensive commentary and history on Islam, says the correct view of the child whom God ordered to be sacrificed was Isaac, not Ishmael, and even Hamza Yusuf in one of his lectures. And I have it saved. And I'm going to try to take a clip. Hamza Yusuf. Consider one of the leading North American Muslim scholars who started Zaytuna Institute in Berkeley, California. In his lecture, he says that you have strong early opinion. It was Isaac. And even says that opinion lends itself to be more credible. Even though some scholars say it's Ishmael, Ishmael he goes, you have strong early opinion that it was Isaac. And he mentions some of the greatest Muslim scholars saying it was Isaac. So he says... Why do Muslims make a big deal? We should actually say it's Isaac so that we don't put any unnecessary obstacles in front of the Jews. Now, he didn't say it that way. I'm just giving you just what he said. But he admits some of the strongest and earliest opinions was it's Isaac, not Ishmael. So there's a debate in our tradition. So when Muslims say it's Ishmael, they're either ignorant of their tradition or dishonest. And we should make it a big deal, especially when the Jews and Christians think it's Isaac. What's the big deal? That's what he basically said in his lecture. Exactly. At least I respect these Muslims because they're being honest in reporting what is in their own primary sources. And as you mentioned, Al-Tabari is considered to be one of the leading commentators when it comes to Islamic commentary. And he is closer to uh, the, the, the time of Muhammad. And here is the theme, as I told you before, Sam, we're discovering more and more that there is later evolution in Islamic interpretations of things. Later, we're talking 500, 600, 700 years. I'm seeing it in the Quran as I'm studying the early manuscripts of the Quran, the same theme. Things keep evolving as you continue. But by the way, I have to correct myself, Al-Fadi, because you know, the great white dictator, the white supremacist, David Wood, who controls all Muslim channels and the ministries of apologists to Islam, David Wood just sent me a text message. He said, the saying is, the jig is up, not the gig is up. And then he tells me, stop embarrassing us with your illiteracy. I apologize, oh great white dope, I mean hope. 
forgive me for being an illiterate Assyrian who's trying to be the Assyrian version of Muhammad. He was illiterate. I'm illiterate. So, folks, it's the jig is up, not the gig. Oh, forgive me, oh, great white one. Are you saying Hater Wood is watching us right now? Because he always stalks me, man. He tries to give the impression that he's the man. But we know he stalks my YouTube channels because he gets all his sound theology from me, all the garbage he gets from Anthony Rogers. And I still love you, Anthony. No disrespect to you. I hear you. So everybody say hi to David, man. We miss him. Surprise, David. <laughs> and by the way, is it a coincidence? The day me and him did a live stream challenging Farid to debate us the next day and come and put us in our place. All of a sudden, conveniently, David Wood's channel, Act 17, got flagged, and he's been prevented from doing live sessions. What are the odds, Christians? What a coincidence that the next day when Farid was going to come on and school David Wood, all of a sudden he can't do live streams. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Surprise, David. But anyway. Yeah, I know. I know. It's amazing. I won't be. I, I won't run it past these guys. I mean, they they are clever uh, when it comes to tactics like this. I've been asking any of them to come and uh, talk to me in Arabic. Not even debate me. I have yet to hear any of them. Yeah. So I don't know. By the way, let me just remind people what you heard today. Take what I gave you. Take what I gave you, and go back and re-listen to the sessions between Jay Smith and Al Fadi on the historical, archaeological, and textual proof showing that Muhammad has nothing to do with Ishmael. Mecca has nothing to do with the true roots of Islam and the Quran. And it's over. Islam is over. Now, for the Muslims, quoting the Quran Hadith will carry more weight for the Muslims than appealing to archaeology. But you have those Muslims who are open enough to consider the archaeological arguments of Dan Gibson. And may God bless that man and preserve him and use him mightily to destroy the foundation of Islam so that Muslims get saved. Now, notice what we're praying for. Not the destruction of Muslims, the salvation of Muslims. The destruction of Muhammad, expose him as the Antichrist he is, the destruction of this satanically inspired book, the Quran, so that Muslims escape the snare of Muhammad and come to Jesus, running to Jesus, falling at the feet of Jesus, who loves them and who died for their salvation. Learn these arguments. Use these arguments and Amen. see by the power of the Holy Spirit, droves of Muslims coming to Christ more so now than at any other time in history. We're living in exciting times. Jesus draws near, and as wickedness spreads, you know the day of the Lord is closer than ever, and it's sooner than later. May we be prepared, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, filled with the Spirit, do all we can to get people saved by the power of the Holy Spirit, Worship Jesus until he comes or we go home. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, comes sooner than later. Let's get Muslims saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, Jai is asking me to give a, a shout out for Ariel. Apparently, he's one of your moderators. And oh, yes, he's he an is. up and coming uh, yeah. a, you know, uh, apologist. Is that true? I need to get your Not verification because Jai is annoying me with these requests every day. Yeah, well, Jai, number one, I have some great mods and some great brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Praise Christ. the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hope the connection is good. I hope it's going good. Jai is one of them. He doesn't say, let's say, let another man praise you. He's a young man who's passionate, loves Jesus. He goes on their Muslim channels and debates them and asks them questions they can't respond. So he's another precious brother. So he's great. Ariel is another young lion of the faith. And the beautiful thing about my mods, they're all from different branches of Christianity. I have mods that are Orthodox, even Roman Catholic. I know some of my friends are going to be upset. No, no, no. To me, they are true believers in every major branch of Christianity. Ariel is a brother who loves Jesus. He's from the Roman Catholic tradition. Jai is a brother who loves Jesus. I think his background, his parents' background, he can correct me, Orthodox, right? So we have Protestant believer who is a mod who loves Jesus, first and the last, another great mod that serves me and loves Jesus Christ. Now, the thing about Protestant because he's Protestant, he's obviously a heretic, so we forgive him for that. No, I'm just kidding. So we got I know, a lot I mean, of uh, I, I agree with you. Protestant doesn't rock at all, man. Right. I'm now, uh, now, another thing. The, the minute you have mods who are Jehovah Witness and Mormons, please let me know. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because I'm trying to find a way. No, never. God forbid. If you're an anti-Trinitarian, you are not my brother. You're not my sister. We can't work together. If you're an anti-Trinitarian. So that means if you're a Unitarian or a Oneness or a Mormon or Jehovah Witness, 
You are not my brother. You are not my sister until you repent and worship the triune God. And until you do, you and I are going to be in opposition. And I'll do everything I can by the power of the Holy Spirit to destroy your false God, your false religion, to take you captive for the glory of the triune God and bring you to the feet of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, in the remaining minutes, brother, I just want to bring this to a meaningful conclusion. What did we learn? The fact that Ishmael has nothing whatsoever to do with Islam and the fact that God made an everlasting covenant through Isaac. Yes. What we learned is that the Muslim claim that Muhammad is a bona fide heir to the Abrahamic ethical monotheistic tradition is a lie from the pit of hell. The Quran doesn't support it. The later Islamic tradition are full of contradictions. They can't agree with each other. Archaeology doesn't support it. History doesn't support it. Folks, the jig, not gig, the jig is up. Muhammad has nothing to do with Abraham or Abraham's God. If you learn the arguments from the Quran that I gave you and from the Islamic traditions and then from the research of Dan Gibson that Jay Smith and Al Fadi have been commenting on, Folks, I'm telling you, this is a massive landslide destroying the very foundation of Islam, showing that the God of Abraham is not the God of Muhammad revealed in the Quran, that Abraham is not the physical ancestor of Muhammad, let alone his spiritual ancestor. And so Muhammad has nothing to do with Abraham, his tradition, his God. He's a false prophet, an agent of Satan, raised up to mislead people from the God of Abraham, but Jesus Christ, who is risen, who is alive, and almighty to save, is raising up his warriors to expose Muhammad and his God to bring Muslims to the true God of Abraham, who is the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, revealed in the only scriptures that the God of Abraham has inspired and preserved, the Holy Bible. May Muslims Amen. get saved, may Christians be strengthened, and may the Lord Jesus make us lions and lionesses, holy unto the Lord, glorifying Amen. until we die or until Jesus returns. Amen, my brother. Amen. I love you. And uh, thank you so much for, of course, uh, taking the time to do this with us. Uh, let's let's pray that uh, uh, every week or every two weeks we will have you here, depending on your schedule. I know you're busy with your live streams, but uh, everybody enjoys having you here, brother. And I want to give a shout out to those who gave through uh, Super Chat. Uh, Viv. Uh, thank you so much. I know you were asking yesterday about the super chat. So thank you so much. I'm humbled by uh, your sacrifice here. I have to tell you, Viv, I love the coffee in your name. And uh, David Wood, thanks, man. Thank you so much for your sacrifice, brother. I mean, you he was, the, do you know that he was the first one to give a super chat basically to my channel when it was approved immediately? Well, that, yeah, but brother, you don't get it. That's his way of controlling you. The white. I uh, hear you. I, so there we go. There we go. Just disarm you enough to think he cares about you, to ensnare you, because that's the tactics of the white man. This man is the white supremacist dictator of apologetics. So as long as he controls you, he'll throw you a bone here thinking he's doing you a favor to keep you under his wraps. The jig is up, brother, right, man. We brother, ain't going for it, brother. I was under the control of Satan for 33 years until the Lord set me free. So you think oh, David can control me by the super chat? I love you, David. So here is what we're going to do, bro. Uh, yes. You know, is there any final thoughts? Yes, Anything uh, you want to share, please? Because uh, I, I want to honor, you know, your time. And also, I want to remind people that you're doing a live stream in about two hours from now. Yes, Lord willing, with around 8.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to do part three on the Son of God appearing in the Old Testament. Folks, we really need your prayers, all of us. And all joking aside, I say this from my heart, I couldn't ask for a better team of apologists who love Jesus than Al Fadi, Vocab Malone, Adam Coleman, John, what do you mean, McCray, even Hader Wood, Jay Smith, Osama Dr. Christian Prince. I love these brothers. They are soldiers of Christ. May I continue to serve with them until Jesus takes us home. Even Islam critique, God bless that brother. And the Lord use him mightily. Pray for us. Pray for our families. Pray for our children. Pray for miraculous protection against slanderers, against agents of Satan who want to attack us and slander us and lie and use lies to you know, spread <clears throat> hatred, smear campaign. Pray for our health, th that God will keep us healthy to do this and to be holy, to truly live for the Lord and be men and women of integrity. We need your prayers. We need your fasting for our families, especially for my two angels, my daughters, May I see them sooner than later? So please pray for us, and we love you for the sake of Jesus. 
Amen. And I want to thank uh, Islam Critique, by the way, for uh, uh, your a sacrifice here. Uh, what What is it with you, Sam? I mean, David gives, uh, you know, Islam critiques give, you know, wh wh why are you not given at all? Because man? I am a selfish hoarder <laughs> who tries to save every penny I got in order to bail myself out if, God forbid, trouble comes upon me. So, but that's how, hey man, at least I I you. Give you, I'm giving you attention. That's more than money. I you know. know really I know. To give someone like you attention because if Ugly was a crime. You and David would be America's most wanted. <laughs> and hey, by the way, I know you always ask about views. Uh, your yeah, view, man, I'm jealous. Your, your viewership has improved, you know. So now, now we have 487 coming to watch you. Listen, dude, but that's for your channel. When I do a channel, I get about 230. Guys, it's 480 here. If I do a live stream, I don't get 400. I'm going to make sure David Wood retires and never does apologetics again. So you better show up. Oh dear guys, please, please go over there, please. Well, thanks, brother. We love you love in the you. Lord. And uh, let's talk, you and I, about the next topic uh, coming soon, hopefully within days or, or within uh, next week or so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the moderators. Thank you for those who gave. Uh, we appreciate all of you for giving your time. And even for those of you who gave through the Super Chat, we, we are honored by uh, you following us. Uh, the idea is to take these kind of teachings, by the way, and share them. Share them with people. It is not about us having him just in a channel. We want as many people in the world actually yes. to watch him. That's why we love uh, when Sam talks about more views, that means more people will be able to watch and share also. That's Amen. the whole idea for us. Views That's what we're about. It's about blasting this message everywhere. If you have Muslim friends, pray for them and ask him to take the time to watch uh, shows like this. Sam's channel, David's channel, Islam Critique channel, my channel, uh, Jay Smith, because we are pouring into them we do things because we love them not because that we are you know they think like we're getting rich rich for what i mean i could be doing something else but we love them we want them to know the savior and that's what all matters thanks my brother god bless you all until we see you again soon on wednesday our regular uh basically live stream with alex blagajevich you know that's another disaster right oh, there uh, oh, lord bless goodness. you guys take care apologetics